the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Savior of our lives, Jesus, the soon coming King, the Alpha, the Omega, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus, the Redeemer of mankind. Clap your hands again for him, he's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me welcome you to the house of the Lord. Amen. Are you excited to be in God's house? In these days of great troubles. And we thank God who has preserved you and preserved me. Amen. We've got a couple of our members uh, who contracted COVID. And they, they are not able to come to church. So this says to me and says to you, Please take extra precautions. Did you hear what I said? What did I say? Take extra precautions. Saints of God, don't take COVID for granted. Can I please tell you this? Don't take COVID for granted. It's a reality on the ground. It has killed bishops, apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists. It has killed people. This is not meant to scare you. You see, faith does not negate reality. Are you understanding? So do everything doable to keep yourself protected. Because you know that the devil takes advantage of what is at his disposal. At the moment, COVID is what is at his disposal. So he will just capitalize of your ne on your negligences and destroy you. Are you understanding? So please, even eat right. Just avoid to be oversized in the days of COVID. It's just a suggestion. Avoid to be what? Oversized. Just be strict in observing and forcing the laws that govern the maintenance of the physical body. There are laws that govern the maintenance of this body. They are in your power. If you violate them, like eating garbage or failing to eat a good diet, failing to exercise, failing to rest enough, failing to take care general of your health, the devil will sneak in and destroy you before your time. I mean, I know of pastors and prophets, bishops, who collapse while they were preaching and die. Because when it comes to you taking care of your body, the natural and physical way, that is beyond God. You can be holy, but not be wise in taking care of your body. You will die with your holiness. Did you watch? I've just made a very shocking statement. You'll die with what? Hello. And God will be excited because it is beautiful to him, the death of his saints. So you'll be shifted out of this world before your time. And God forbid, I say it shall not happen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Are you excited? Let's talk about the importance of coming into the house of the Lord. I want all those who come here to preach on, on this altar to do whatever they do. They must always understand that one of the things that we need to do is to help God's people to mature in the art of worshiping God. Because when we pass from this world, what we are going to be doing all our lives in eternity is worship. Worship is the atmosphere in which God dwells. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands. I want to stir up the spirit of worship. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Lindo kapazete bayanda. Lenda bosaka bayanda, lenda kupasete bayanda. It says, "Come into His courts with praise. Enter His gates with thanksgiving." It's a protocol. So when we gather, heaven expects each one who comes into the house of the Lord 
to engage in worship, to engage in praise. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for in his presence with thanksgiving as a child of God what the Bible is expecting you to do or is telling you to do is that you should create segments of times in a day in a week in a month where you come before God just to worship him to honor him with worship and praise not necessarily to make requests and you need to understand that as children of God, God redeemed us with the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus, he accomplished the following things. Number one, he blotted away all our sins. Number two, he used the same blood to establish a new covenant. We are not just a bunch of believers, but we are covenant people who are under a new covenant established, ratified, based on the blood of Jesus. And a covenant is an unbreakable agreement. So, I am a Christian by covenant. God established a covenant between humanity and divinity using not the blood of animals but the blood of Jesus that same blood of Jesus apart from putting us into a new covenant it qualifies us to approach the presence of God one to enter the presence of God two to remain in the holy presence of God three every day. Did you hear what I've said? So when you are praying, you must understand these dynamics that God does not accept you because you are doing righteous things. He accepts you because you are clothed with his organized righteousness uniform. That righteousness, the Bible says it's obtainable through faith in Jesus. So the understanding of this gives you boldness when you worship and pray. Are you in the house? So the blood of Jesus qualifies sinful human beings who have accepted Jesus to be in a relationship with the Holy God. Did you get that? Is that clear? So when we understand this, worship, gratitude wells up. Because you realize what is it I could have done to qualify for this facilitation? Nothing. We are products of grace and lift up your hands so when I say let us praise him and thank him you begin to recollect what was done you begin to recite what was done the choir is not supposed to sing songs they must sing songs that are driven by gratitude because of what was done. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are worthy. 
Your voice must be heard. Your voice must sound. spirit and in truth seeking for them may he find you as a true worshiper say father god i bless you thank you for loving me before the foundation of the earth thank you almighty god for choosing to create me in your likeness and according to your image thank you almighty god that i'm now a bearer of the image and the likeness of jehovah thank you my father for giving me the right to exercise Exercise. Exercise. Dominion. Dominion in the earth. In the earth. Thank you, Almighty Thank God. You, Almighty I bless God. your holy name. Thank, Thank you, Almighty God, God, for giving me the right, me the right. to exercise, exercise. Dominion, dominion over all the oh, works of oh, your oh, hands, oh, all your creation. Oh, 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 I bless you. I what an honor. Oh, what an oh, elevated oh, status. Oh, Thank you, my God. Thank you, Father, that after creating me, you blessed me and you said, I must be fruitful. I must multiply. I must subdue the earth. I say yes, Lord. I will live my life in accordance with that original order and mandate of Jehovah, my creator. Thank you, my God, that you came through 
after sin was committed. You never gave up on me, oh God. You sent Jesus to come and be the sacrifice for my sins. You used the blood of Jesus to, to redeem me from my sins and to reconcile me back to you. Now, I'm a born again child of God because of your great love, because of your mercy, because of your compassion. That's why I worship you. That's why I honor you. I bow before you. I worship you. I glorify your holy name. Thank you, my Father. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Lindo Kupas Kalayamasa. Who's I'm standing as a child of the Most High God. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Not because of anything I did. But because of the mercy. Because of the amazing grace. The grace of the Almighty God. The grace of El Shaddai. The grace of Yahweh. The grace of Adonai. The grace of the Lord. I am what I am today. By that amazing grace. Lendo Kapasuya Makatabaya. Listen to me. What causes you or makes you to be a powerful individual, a human being? It's not your education. It's not even your being a Christian. It is your new identity. Because by grace, me and you have been elevated, translated to become sons and daughters of who? The Most High God. The all-powerful Jehovah, that's your father. Oh my God. How can you walk in confusion? Lift up your hands and say, Father, thank you for being my father. Thank you that now, not tomorrow, oh Shata Kamaya. Now we are, oh Shinda Kupaseya. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I understand, I know, I believe, regardless of my circumstances. Now I am a child of God. Oh Shapakatala Father, I'm grateful. Father, I'm thankful that I'm no longer ordinary. I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm born of God. I'm born of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of Jehovah dwells on the inside of me. Oh, Shandala Messiah, Basha. Pray like a pray. 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 like he did to Job but he can never take your new identity as long as you also do your part of holding strong in knowing who you are we are children of the most high God we are preserved here by that new identity God Almighty is keeping us in this world we are his holy nation we are his he, we are his inheritance hallelujah the bible says we are a chosen what generation we are what a holy nation a peculiar people taken out of this world to be representatives of Yahweh El Shaddai Adonai oh my God tell him again thank you father to God be the glory great things he has done so love him the world that he gave us his son Yeah.
in him no failure in him he is a way maker he is your God your helper celebrate who you are to him celebrate who he is to you I say celebrate who you are to him celebrate who he is to you we are children of the most high God oh Shabba Gadala hey Offer the devil with this revelation. You tell the devil you are too late. I'm born again now. You tell that devil you are too late. Wizards cannot bewitch you because witchcraft does not work against a truly born again Christian. It doesn't work. Worship him, celebrate him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Let Alaba Sekeva by Endevo say, Oh, Simi Kesutu Mokawe. Simi Kesutu Mokawe. fueled by revelation and understanding that causes you to go into your bank account pull out a good sum of money give it to God and say with what he has done lift up your hands Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder. disciples after they asked him to teach them to pray these were Jewish men their scheme their order was based on the laws and the order of the Old Testament he said when you pray you must pray like this you must say my father who sits the most powerful throne of heaven may your name be kept holy why must your name be kept holy and celebrated 
because you chose to make me an ordinary nobody to become a son of the Most High God. May your kingdom come. Just as you got me to be your child, get more. Let more surrender to you to enjoy these benefits. May your will be done, not the chaos and the confusion in the world. There's order in heaven. We demand it to be on earth. Oh my God, lift up your hands. Say, Father, I worship you for being my father. Say, I now pray. I say, my father, my real father, who sits on the most powerful seat above the earth, my father, who is in heaven, the mighty throne of heaven. May your name be kept holy. May your name be respected by all the human beings of the earth. May your rule and your dominion come upon our world. May your will be done in all the earth forever and ever. My Father, may your will be done forever and ever. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I glorify your holy name. Now, when Jesus said, you'll say, my father in, who art in heaven, that statement authorizes. That's why the following lines are saying, may your kingdom come. They don't say, please, may your kingdom come. There's no please. And next to that, may your kingdom come. The original rendition actually says, kingdom of God come. So because we are a child of God and I'm a child of God, we are those who are supposed to execute the mandate and the vision of God on earth. Mm. Hallelujah. Be strong, dear child of God. Are you understanding me? You hold a very powerful new identity. Be strong. Say, Father, I bless your holy name. Father, I, bless I will never allow myself never allow to be taken for granted. Taken for I will never allow myself never allow to be overwhelmed, to overwhelmed by the many troubles, the many troubles of, the of the last days because I will always refuse to forget, to forget who, I who I am. I will always remember, will always remember that, I'm that I'm a child of the most powerful. The most powerful. Creator, Creator, Jehovah God Almighty, Jehovah God. that's my father. That's my, my, father. Father. my identity, my identity causes, me causes me to be a powerful, be a powerful individual. individual. Thank, Thank you, God. God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Take your seats. Did I help you? Did I help you? The second thing that I want to really urge you and request you to do as we are almost finishing the year especially those who are over 40, you need to get yourself defined, know your reason, your purpose for being alive. It's not quite right and quite okay for a person to be over 50, close to 60, over 60, you still don't know what is your flagship mission. Because it is a requirement to know what is it that you are pushing in your generation and for God? If you ask me, Apostle Justice, anytime anyone asks me, pastors like now that you're on TV, they send me messages, men of God, what is like your mission, your vision? I say, mine is simple. I'm a reconnector of humanity with divinity, full stop. I'm what? A reconnector of what? Humanity with So it means I live to help people connect with who? With God. Then I've got hashtags. I've got hashtags under that. I'm a campaigner for God. That's a hashtag. I'm a lifter of Jesus. That's a hashtag. So Apostle Justice hashtag lifter of Jesus. Because God will not think for you. That's why he gave you the mind. You discover yourself through prayer and studying the scriptures. To understand what is God's vision. So that you align yourself with that vision. Ask your neighbor, say, hello under the mask. What's your mission? What are you all about? What's your hashtags? Hello? So and so hashtag what? Confusion. Say, God forbid. Hallelujah. I'm a campaigner for moral and social justice. 
When people hear me talking some powerful things, you know, they say, oh, Pastor, they don't talk like this. I'm not there my, myself. I know my mission. I'm an advocate for moral and social justice. Hashtag activist <laughs> for moral uprightness. The hashtags are many. I'm an activist as well. An activist. Oi, oi, Penduga. <laughs> I'm a progressive for the kingdom. Hallelujah. I'm an activist for moral uprightness. When things are not done right, I get disturbed. Because why? I'm an activist. Who are you and what are you about? Hallelujah. I'm fueled because there must, there must be something. You see, I'm fueled by passion. Passion for human wellness. Because I know God never created any human being in his image and likeness so that that human being ends up being a walking confusion on earth. I'm fueled by passion for human wellness because lives of many people are ruined by that heartless enemy of our God called Satan, Aka Lucifer, also known as Lucifer. Hello, I pray for you. May you live your life according to what was written before you were conceived in your mother's womb. God said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1.5, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I had a master plan for you. Discover that plan in Jesus' name. And may you live long. May you not be killed by COVID before your time. Am I talking to some people? May you not be killed by a chronic disease before your time. But you need to safeguard your life by discovering your purpose and fulfill it diligently and use that purpose to fight any attempt of the enemy to cut you before your time. Say, I will live my full lifespan. Thank you, Jesus. Let's discuss the month of uh, August because I'm going to give you some instructions. But before we get there, last week I mentioned that I want the month of August to be a month of what? Prayer. Now, if you are going to pray effectively, if you are going to pray all right, you need to always know who you are to God, who God is to you, so that when you take that position of prayer, you are defined. There's no confusion. So even if the devil whispers some negative things into your ears, you tell him, shut up, I know who I am. And then you begin to pray. Are you understanding? You begin to do what? To pray. Because the Bible says when we approach prayer or engage in the discipline of prayer, Hebrews 4, 16 says we must come boldly, not with confusion. You come with confidence, with boldness, with assurance. You know who God is to you. Are you understanding me? It says, come boldly to the throne of grace. So requirement number one is that know who you are to God, who God is to you. Number two, come with confidence. Because it's easy to allow negative happenings to cloud your prayer. So that as you approach prayer, you are going to prayer even confused, not knowing who you are because of the many problems that are happening around you. Always be defined. Did I help you? Say, I will always be defined. Pray with a sober mind, a sound spirit. Did you hear? Sober mind, sound spirit. You know exactly who you are. You are able to put things according to their order. Confusion aside, identity aside. Hallelujah. Number three, you've got to pray with faith. What do we mean pray with faith? Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, God will not gladly receive your prayer. 
It says those who approach God to pray, they must pray with faith, knowing that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you pray with faith. It is the prayer of faith that causes changes. Number four, pray with sonship authority. I've never said this. Pray with sonship authority. It means you must be someone who's clear, well informed in matters of the Bible or the constitution of heaven. Because when you pray, you are here on earth, you are presenting matters before the supreme court of heaven. So you must know the constitution to argue and state your story well. So you pray with sonship authority. Am I helping you? When we say to God, we don't want witchcraft in this country. The statement sounds simple, but the person who's praying with understanding and sonship authority, he knows that in that statement, the interests of God are fully covered and represented. Why? God does not want witchcraft. As a son of God, what God hates, I hate. So my prayer is is strengthened by my aligning myself with the interests of Jehovah. You pray with sonship authority. Am I helping? Are you writing? So even if a demon troubles you, no matter fear a tikolo, she comes at night. You 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 wake up, you realize that attack with a sonship mindset. That yes, there are tikoloshes in our world. But not me is supposed to be approached by such. Because I live in another kingdom. This nonsense is from another kingdom. So on the basis of that understanding, you rise up against that attack like a wounded lion. Because when you look at the demonic attack, I'm sleeping. You can imagine I'm sleeping. And then a tigoloshi comes and jumps on me. Apostle Justice. Hello? So when I wake up, I don't even bother God. I ask this rubbish, how dare you? Before you came, you didn't know who I am. By the time you use the name of Jesus, you use it as a weapon to smash it. Because <laughs> prayer that works is prayer that must be backed up with holy anger. Holy anger is a product of revelation. Did you hear what I've said? Prayer that is powerful, even if you are praying against sickness, it must be backed up with holy anger. The holy anger is as a result of revelation. Where you say, I know too much to be taken for granted. Some people pray, in the name of Jesus, Father, the Bible says by the wounds we were healed. You are a beggar. You are a beggar. Who is sounding spiritual? You don't even involve God. You say according to the constitution, which is the Bible. Subsection 53. Section 5. It's a court of heaven. There are demonic spirits that are waging war against you. You've got to fight legally. The devil told Jesus it is written. You must be able to tell the devil, sorry devil, it is written too. That by the wounds of Jesus I was healed. Are you understanding me? Are you hearing me? I saw a video clip of mine. It is trending. I took down Peter about Kucha. You know, see, you know when I spoke that way, where were you? Do you know where I was standing? I, I never made that statement standing here. No, I made it standing in my office. Knowing who I am on earth. When heaven looks at me, it looks at who? It looks at a representative. I'm a push of God's agenda. What God hates, I hate. Lindo Kustala Basa. No manga to us, Pastala, Ubuni Lagule Service, Babi, Kunalumi Babi, Bakafagel Jazang Alkum, Lam Yam, Linda Bega Buganga. He will be scattered. 
I'm not preaching or preaching or talking about me. I'm talking about what it means to be a child of God. Stand to your feet and say, thank you, Father. Rise to your feet and say, I know who I am. See, I will never allow myself to be undermined by the troubles, the problems of this life. Thank you, Jesus. Repeat it. Say, I know who I am. Say, I will never allow myself to be confused by troubles of this world because I don't walk by sight, by looking at what is happening. I walk by knowing who I am, who my father is. Thank you, Jesus. Take your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So by prayer, write it down. By prayer and declaring the word of God, you change earthly circumstances. By prayer, the prayer of faith, the prayer of boldness, the prayer that is backed up with sonship authority, the prayer of knowing who you are before God, coupled with declaring the word of God from your new position as a child of God, that's how you are able to effectively cause changes in every situation. So visit your prayer. Check yourself when you pray. When you pray, do you pray with holy anger, with deep faith, deep assurance, or you just pray generally on general terms? Because you just hear when there's a problem, you must pray. No. Pray from this strong standpoint. Say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, because I've declared the month of August, write it down. Please avoid praying your usual prayers. Upscale your prayer. Take your prayer to the position of the things that I've just taught you. Let your prayer be full of confidence, assurance, boldness, and sonship authority. God will always honor his word that is spoken by a Christian who has faith in God and the word. Did I help you? Are you learning something? So, this month of August, this is what I want you to do for me. I want you to engage in the law of activation. Write that. The law of what? Activation. It's a month of new beginning. If you are going to treat the month like the past months, things will happen in the same order of the past months. So I want to sort of position you and myself and those watching us through other platforms to engage in the law of activation. Because why do we say law of activation? You know as I know that God will never perform or do anything without your active participation. Write that one down. He will never do anything significant for you and for me, God in heaven, without what? Your active participation. Let's break it down. Without you doing what you need to do and are expected to do. This world we live in, it is governed and regulated to a large extent by words. The world we live in is governed and regulated to a large extent by what? By words. So, because the world is governed by words, you must be a master in deploying correct words to activate changes on your behalf. Am I helping you? So when we say pray, the words that come out of your mouth must be effective words. That's why James says the effective prayer 
of a righteous person brings many results. James 5.16. Why did James say the effective, effectual? It means your prayer must be structured in such a way that it is effective. Write this statement down. Your prayer must be structured in such a way that it is what? Effective. It means it must be a prayer that is designed to produce results. That's what we mean by effective. So how do I make my prayer effective? Simple. Pray the word. Pray what? Pray the word of God. Why do you pray the word? Because Isaiah 55 verse number 11, God says, My word which has come out of my mouth, which has now been reduced into logos written in the Bible, if you pick it there with faith, it, became, it becomes a rhema. As you speak that logos with, as a rhema because you have put faith in it, changes will happen. Am I helping you? Let's avoid making religious noise and call it prayer. Prayer is to put God in remembrance. Write it down. Effective prayer is prayer that puts God in remembrance. It means when I pray and when you pray, we keep on reminding God what he has already declared in his word. So you pray what is written. Hey! So in this month of August, become a chanter. Hi, Sange Nagasosari. This month of August become what? A chanter. Yabona, Yabona, if you miss this, you will miss the month. This ma if you miss this, don't blame me if things don't change. This month of August, employing the law of activation, become a chanter. Of the word of God. The guys who are in sorcery, all they do a lot is to chant. The evil consequences that must happen to their targets, they activate them by chanting. Be in the tendency of just taking a set time, a given time in a day where you just declare the promises of God concerning your life. Declare the will of God concerning our nation and our world. COVID-19 must be swept out of this world by Christians who will declare the word of God nonstop. Are you understanding me? Are you hearing me? Are you in this house? So be a chanter. What is to chant? It means you are saying it repeatedly, continuously. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my family. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. You know that statement sounds simple to a religious person, but that statement is very heavy. When you say Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life, it means you void every interference of Satan in your life. Because when you say Jesus Christ is Lord, you are activating the law of authorization and legalization. You are saying, Jesus, my life is your exclusive domain. Yes, just that statement. When you say Jesus Christ is Lord, that word Lord, actually in the Greek, when you break it down, it means landlord, owner of a property. So when you say Jesus Christ is Lord of my life, demons get scared because they hear you, you are giving Jesus now exclusive right over your life. Why do you think the Bible says at the mention of that name? No, it's not just mentioning Jesus. No. When you legalize and authorize that name over your life, every name must bow. Anything that rises up against you must back off. Are you blessed so far? 
So stand somewhere in your house and say, Jesus Christ is Lord over this house. Witchcraft is scattered. Jesus Christ is Lord over this life. Demonic interference is overturned. Christians, we are underutilizing our authority. Chant the word of God. Hallelujah. So you will activate the good things you want with your words. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18, 20. Yela bakayana. Open your mouth now, even before we read the verse, I want you to speak, to speak the promises of God over my life. And say, Father, the Bible says those who serve you, they shall live their full lifespan. I will not die before my time because I'm busy pushing your agenda. Father God, I know what I'm alive for. I am here, oh my God, to represent you well in every sphere of life where you give me access to. Lord my God, you are my God, I will save you. Chant now. Why are you quiet? What are you waiting for? Start chanting now. Lendo kapasuya makatabaya. Lenda kapaseya bashaka. Linda kamazeya bo shetela babaze. Ola bakayana. Chant, 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 chant. Start now. I've told you so many times from this altar, become a prophet of your destiny. It means program the things you want to see in, in your life you declare and say yes there's COVID but God has said it in his word in Exodus 15 26 he said I will put none of these diseases upon you I will not allow the diseases of the people of this world to be upon you because I'm the Lord God who healed thee are you understanding me so you need to prophesy be a prophet of your destiny you can see good Mabanja coming to church is getting restricted so you must know how to be a prophet of your destiny you prophesy concerning your life concerning your business concerning your finances concerning your children concerning your career concerning your health hey if you keep that instrument of activation shut the devil will activate evil things against you It says a man shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth. Ah, hi, hey, so my mouth can produce fruit. It's a figure of speech. With your mouth, you can program and regulate happenings. Write it down, I've broken down for you. With your mouth, when the Bible says fruit, it's happenings, whether negative or positive. With your mouth, you can program and regulate and activate happenings. So in this month, learn to use your mouth wise. Huh? With the consequences of his words, a man shall be satisfied, whether good or evil. So this month of August, I want you to package words. Did you hear what I've said? I want you to do what? Package a cluster of scriptures. Write them down. Scriptures that you are going to declare over your life. Listen to me. I am created in God's image. You are created in God's image and his likeness. When sin came, it interfered with that design. After we get born again, we are made alive again to that image and likeness. Are you understanding me? That's why the Bible says those of us who are Christian, we are like Jesus here on earth. So, because God created us in his image and likeness, when we look at God, one of his attributes, he's a creative God. Write it down. He's what? He's a creative God. He creates. It means he brings something out of nothing. That is what creation means. He's a 
the creative God. It means he brings something from nothing. So when the Bible says mine na wastalwe ngemfana ngiso wankulunkulu image and likeness likeness it means we have that attribute we are creative creatures With your words you can recreate your world and your circumstances Ai engosi am with your mouth we go down to verse 21 look at verse 21 and then we'll go to Proverbs 14 12 look at the two verses verse 21 it says death and life are in the power of the tongue they who indulge in it so Good and bad can be programmed with my tongue and your tongue. Yeah. I've paraphrased it. Good and bad can be activated by my mouth and your mouth. Those who use it, that word indulge, it means to indulge. You see, if I stand here for three hours, and you are sitting, you are not running away. It's called indulging me. It means you are tolerating, you are patient with me very extensively. So if I say you indulge in your tongue, it means you don't play games in engaging that tongue and speaking. You use it override. Are you in the house? So why is the Bible talking like this? Let's go to Proverbs 12, 14. What's the Bible? This is something else. This month of August, what did I say? Chant what? The promise. Of, didn't I say that? I said what? Chant the promises of God. Speak them. Recite them. I mean, different religions of this world, they engage in this act and discipline of reciting, chanting. From the fruit of his words, a man shall be satisfied with good. <laughs> and the work of men's hands shall come back to him as a harvest. This whole verse, this whole scripture is just based on confession speaking. What follows there is a figure of speech. So it means God is saying to me and to you, dear, dear Christian, dear Mr. Christian, dear Mrs. Christian, from today change your modus operandi. Change the way you are doing things. Instead of crying for the pastor to pray for you, become a prophet of your destiny. The things you want to change, change them with your words. Continue speaking tirelessly because the scriptures that never lie tell us that what I keep on speaking predominantly, I will end up experiencing. Did you hear what I've just said? Write the statement down. What I and you keep on speaking predominantly, you will keep on what? Experiencing. I, I remember I got a message from a woman in South Africa. She said, Pastor, I've passed my nine months. I went to the hospital. They've checked me. My, my thumb is big, but the doctor said they see nothing. So I said to her, is there anything like moving or jumping? She said, no, but I'm pregnant. So I said, woman, you are confusing me. You are past nine months. So I said, go to the doctors. Let them bring every machine to see why is your tummy big and they say there's nothing. It's possible to have this pregnancy, pseudo pregnancy. The word pseudo, that's where you take the word psych. It means you are so desperate such that you are already telling yourself in your mind that you are pregnant. And then because of your desperation in your mind, you are, so, you are telling yourself you are pregnant. Superficially, the stomach starts bulging. No, there's no baby. It's, as a man thing, so, so shall she be. Medically proven. 
Auna si sule si su semsanga no lesla. Okay. What are we trying to bring into light here? What you keep on thinking, whether negative or positive, is what will keep on literally happening. If your mind is full of negatives, including negative talkings, negative happenings, will be the outcome. That's why if you want to make your children so terrible, keep on speaking negatively about them and over them. Or any person for that matter. Words are powerful. Anything that you want to change in your life from this day, including this country, let's speak it. Let's do what? Let's do what? Let's do what? Let's do what? Let's speak it. A simple line of prayer where you say, Father God, may your kingdom come upon this country. And say it repeatedly, it becomes an order that the angels are executing. Did you hear what I've said? Write the statement down. As the thing that you keep on speaking as a Christian, if you are speaking the, the, the promises of God, the word of God, you know the Bible says the angels of God excel in carrying out his word. Have you seen a verse like that? They do what? They excel. And then it also says the word of God run, runs what? Swiftly. So when you keep on speaking the written word of God, the promise of God over your life, that's what the angels and creation and nature will execute on your behalf. If you say, ah, pastor, nothing for me, those are shy. The forces of darkness will execute that. Wherever you go, just before you appear, the door shuts. It's not a curse. You are not utilizing your instrument correctly. So whatsoever you want to change, speak that change. I say speak that change. Whatsoever change you want, speak that change. Speak that change. With the Father in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that my body will be free from sickness from this day going forward. Every sickness uh, symptom disappears in the name of Jesus. Say, Father God, I'm a tither, I'm a giver. According to your word, I'm not supposed to be broke because I'm a tither, I'm a giver and I work well. Money will Will always appear for me. I carry favor because I'm a child of God. I'm under the blessing because I'm a child of God. Father God, those of good things are opening for me because the Bible says you are going before me leveling every mountain. You are going before me cutting through bars of iron, removing obstacles, removing barriers. Lord, you are making a way for me in the name of Jesus. Oh, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Don't waste time. Oh my God, I speak to my body. I say my body will remain healthy and strong. My bones will be strong. I will reach 80 and beyond. Still very strong and vibrant. Sickness will never abuse my body. Sickness will not thrive in my body body. I'm a child of God. Life favors me. Ha. We are teaching our work sense and your short. Who can't you call my life favors me in the name of Jesus. Wherever I go, doors open for me in the name of the Lord. I connect with the right people in the name of the Lord. Life favors me. Wherever I go, doors open for me in the name of Jesus. I'm born of the Lord. Therefore, the favor of the Lord is upon me. Life favors me. That's how I activate money towards my life. Life favors me. Good things favor me. Wherever I go, doors open in the name of the Lord. This month of August, no evil shall befall me. Professor! Hey! 
this man the focus no evil shall befall me I will not be counted among the statistics of those who are COVID-19 positive the Lord's hand is upon me God is unto me like a wall of fire who oh, stand up and prophesy hey They are Christians. The devil has, has anointed them with the scarecrow anointing. Scarecrow is this motionless thing. They come to church motionless, wordless, voiceless, actionless. Can you imagine? If you are in that tendency of just looking at circumstances, bad things are happening. Say Abu and Jamza Satan is in Lati Capatelaco. Say Abu and Abbas Nalo Kuluma von Boti Bin Zelan. Oh, the devil will mess you up. Oh, according to what we read, the devil will mess you up. Become a prophet of your destiny. Lift up your angry hand. Whatsoever you want to see happening in August, I'm giving you a, a few minutes. Begin to declare it. Begin to announce it. Did you hear what I've said? People are contracting COVID-19. Not me. People are getting COVID-19. Not me. I'm prophesying. People are dying early. Not me. People are losing jobs. Not me. People are going around broken, busted. Not me. People's businesses are failing. Not my business. Oh my God, prophesy. Prophesy. Hey, Shapa Katala Basa. Sente Lebebesia Makata. Hi, 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 hi. Prophesy. 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 I did hear you. Prophesy. Mfunu Seben Sesanta Ganje. Prophesy. Uti doors of good things I have opening for me. By the name of Jesus. Doors of good things are opening for me. By the name of Jesus. My children are accessing scholarship. By the name of Jesus, doors are opening for me in the name of the Lord. Oh, Katabaya, Halanda Kamasaya, prophesy, prophesy. I didn't hear you. Uta me tida, I me giver. My payments are released. My payments are released. Oh, Shapa Kata, ay 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 ay. With every case of faith. Failure, I overturn all evil spells cast upon my life by wizards and witches. I overturn, oh my God, with all evil spells cast on my life by witches and sorcerers. I overturn no car accident. I will not be in any car accident. My car will never be in any car accident. I will not die before my time. Oh, professor. Sheta la basa, lunda kupasa ya maya, lete kepe seya. Uta me child of God, I'm untouchable. The devil will not violate my life. Did you hear what I've said? Uta me child of God, the devil will not violate my life. Usha pakata maya, alaba kaya nabusia. Hola bakuya na basa. Ay 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 ay. Hey shabakata baya. Satali anda masaya. Are you prophesying? Hola ba kustalanda. Uti all my children will make it a school in the name of Jesus. Satali makata baya. Uti doors are opening for me. I will make great connections. This man the forecast. I did hear you. I will make great connections. Oh my God. Opportunities are gravitating towards my life. Oh, Are you prophesying? I want you to be a prophet of your destiny. Sita makatabaya. Alabakayanda. Hey! Hey, hey, hey. hey. 
Sense of God, God forbid that should that this should be regarded as a hyping. I was not hyping you. No. Take these things. Be a prophet of your destiny. Decide with words and faith, speaking the word of God, what happens in you and around you. Am I helping you? Christianity is warfare. That's why the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. And this month of August being a month of new beginnings. Eight symbolizes new hope. It symbolizes new horizons. It symbolizes a good future, new happenings. Huh? But it also denotes new beginnings because after God destroyed all mankind in the book of Genesis chapter 8, he wiped up everything. He used eight human beings, eight individuals to begin a new a new generation. A child by Jewish culture on day number eight circumcised because it symbolizes new beginnings, new assurances. You are ushered into new things. 
So you can let this month pass if you fail to key into its prophetic significance. So by prophesying, demand new happenings. Did you hear what I've said? Demand what? Put a demand on the month by prophesying according to its order. Announce and say, by my faith in the word and the ways of the Lord, I declare new beginnings will happen for me. Oh, I prophesy, let there be new beginnings. I prophesy, let there be new happenings. Amen. I prophesy, let there be new doors opening for you. Amen. New opportunities, Amen. new connections, new happenings, Amen. new beginnings, Amen. new connections, Amen. new happenings. Amen. Demand the new happenings every day of this month. Every morning say, I command new opportunities to locate. And I want to give you this instruction. Because until you do something in a different way, different things cannot happen. This month of August, strive to do this prophetic action. Can I tell you what it is? Every Sunday or every Monday, beginning of a week, release an offering of 800 bucks. When you come to church, come with 800. I'm not talking to everyone. I'm talking to those who feel in their spirit that I'm overdue. Did you hear? I'm long overdue where I am. You activate new, new beginnings. If you don't have 800, you can bring 80 bucks. You can bring 108, you can bring five. It must have the eight. Are you understanding? From today until the end of the month. God says, test me and see. Test me and see. Test me and see. It means do it and watch. May the Lord do wonders for you. Amen. May this month be a month of new beginnings. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Run with this word. Amen. Pray so strong and so authoritatively. Amen. Stand strong in your new ground as a child of God. Amen. Stand strong declaring the promises of God. Amen. Nothing will defeat you. Amen. In your new position as a child of God, you are more than a conqueror. Amen. From this office of an apostle, I declare to you, new opportunities are locating oh, you this Month. I say new opportunities yes. are locating yes. you. Yes. I say new connections will come your yes. way. Yes. I say new beginnings and exciting beginnings will happen yes. for you. Yes. Those that yes. were shut for a long time, they are opening for you this August. Yes. In the name of the Lord, I declare that August is a month where God will favor you in a special way. I say God will favor you in a special way. Hallelujah.